Hello, my name is Andy and I'm part of the technical team here at SDR Play. This short video is intended to give you an overview of the RF port connections for the new RSP2 from SDR Play and provide some guidance on how best to use them. The RSP2 has connections on two sides of the case. One side contains the USB Type B socket that is used to connect your RSP to your PC or other computing platform and it also contains an external input and output for the 24 MHz master reference clock. In this video though we're going to focus on the other side which contains the connectors for the RF input ports. As you can see, unlike the RSP1 which had just one RF port, the RSP2 contains three. The two right hand ports are general 50 ohm RF ports which operate from 1.5 MHz to 2 GHz. 2 GHz is a hard upper limit as the unit will not function above 2 GHz. However, whilst 1.5 MHz is not a hard lower limit, it is the lowest frequency that we recommend using these ports, and the lowest frequency for which these ports are specified. Using these ports below 1.5 MHz will most likely result in degraded performance from that specified. The left hand port has a detachable 3 pin plug with screw connections. This port is a high impedance port with a notional 1k ohm imp input impedance which operates from around 1 kilohertz up to 30 megahertz. Let me talk in a little bit more detail about each of these ports. The right hand and centre ports are ports A and B respectively. Both use an SMA female connector and so you will need to use an SMA male connector to, to connect to them. The SMA male adapter is the one with the centre pin. Please check you are not using an SMA female adapter as these are also fairly common but will not work with the RSP2. The main difference between port A and port B is that port B has a BIOS T which can be enabled from within SDR Uno or other suitable software packages. The BIOS T provides a 4.7 volt output with up to 100 milliamps of current which can be used to supply an external LNA or possibly used as a control for an RF switch. The left hand port is the high impedance port, which we also refer to as the high Z port. And this is worth describing in a bit more detail. As I've already mentioned, this uses a three pin pluggable connector. The right hand pin is ground, and this can also be used for applying an external ground connection to your RSP. The left and centre pins are balanced input pins. The reason for providing a balanced input is to give the maximum flexibility on usage. For example, if you're interested in shortwave listening, you can use this port directly with a passive wound loop antenna in a balanced configuration or with a random wire antenna in an unbalanced configuration. The benefit of the balanced loop antenna is that they give very good immunity to electrical interference which can be a real problem at HF and below. If you're going to use this port with a balanced loop antenna, simply connect the two wires from the loop to the P and N screw connections. When using a random wire antenna, which is inherently unbalanced, you can either connect directly to this port by using the P input or connect via a one-to-one -one balance so that you convert your unbalanced antenna to a balanced connection at the RSP input. If you choose to connect directly to the P input, we recommend that you use a short loop of wire to connect the N input to the adjacent ground connection. It is even possible to connect the, uh, via a coax cable and even through the cable characteristic impedance will not match the port impedance as long as the cable is reasonably short. This will have no real impact on performance. In this case we would recommend only using a cable length that is less than one quarter wavelength which is 2.5 meters at 30 megahertz or 7.5 meters at 10 megahertz. To connect a coax cable to this port we recommend connecting the center conductor to the P input and the outer shield to the N input. So that's it for this video. We will cover using the reference clock inputs and outputs for synchronizing multiple RSP2s in a separate video. If you should have any questions on using the RF ports on the RSP2, please email us at feedback at sdrplay.com or support at sdrplay.com. Thank you for watching.